All right, our last lecture in Unit 4, The Wave Nature of Light, is on the polarization of light. This is section 10.5 from your textbook. So you might have heard polarized when it comes to sunglasses. So what, uh, what polarized sunglasses do is they eliminate the glare of reflected light off of horizontal surfaces. So if you're, um, if you're wearing polarized glasses and you're looking at the, a surface um, of a stream, for example, um, you'll be able to see through to the bottom of the stream if it's a relatively clean stream without seeing the reflection on the surface. So how does that work exactly? How is it that we're blocking out this reflected um, horizontal light? So um, the evidence for polarization was first reported in 1669. There was a Danish scientist, his name was Erasmus Bartholinus, and he observed that a single ray of light separated into two distinct rays while passing through a piece of calcite crystal. So here's uh, an image of calcite, and you can see how um, it looks like you can see the bottom of the, the page where it says calcite, but you can also see calcite on the top as well. So to understand the principles behind polarized lenses and the splitting of a ray of light by calcite crystals, you first need to grasp the concept of polarization. So as you know, electromagnetic waves have electric and magnetic fields that are perpendicular to each other and, and to the direction of propagation. So these fields can take many different directions and still be perpendicular to the direction of propagation. It is these directions that determine the polarization of light. So um, what your textbook uses and what's often uses is the term unpolarized light. But I prefer to use the term randomly polarized light. So what I've done here, I've put another image on top um, of what we had here. That's, um, that's how we talked about electromagnetic waves. Uh, there was an, an E, or an electric wave, uh, or an electric field that generates the magnetic field. And this would be um, a polarized wave. Essentially, there's one electric uh, waveform, and there's one magnetic waveform. But when we're talking about randomly polarized light or unpolarized light, um, you have to imagine that that electric wave could be in all possible directions, which means the magnetic would be in all possible directions as well. So I'll take this image away and show you what we have underneath. We have our light source. Um, the light that's coming out is randomly polarized. There are electric sine waves, I guess you can think of it as, that are in all different directions, radially around the, uh, the, the linear direction of propagation. Now, when we have polarized light, um, what we're going to do is eliminate um, all of the different, uh, uh, all the waves in, in, in all directions with the exception of the one we're trying to, uh, uh, to keep. So um, our light as it comes from a source is unpolarized. When we have polarized light, it's basically light that is only, uh, uh, that is only vibrating in the, in the single plane. And that polarization occurs if we can block the axis of light oscillation from all the other sources. So let's write this down. We have unpolarized light, but I also want you to put in brackets next to that randomly polarized light. It's a mixture of light with different waves and different directions of propagation, and polarized light, which is light waves which vibrate in a single plane. So as shown earlier, polarization occurs when you block one of the axes of light oscillation. Polarizing filters developed in the 1920s have the ability to selectively absorb all but one orientation of the electric waves, or sorry, the electric fields in electromagnetic waves as shown. Uh, after light or any electromagnetic wave has passed through a filter, all of the electric fields lie in one plane and the wave is said to be pl plane polarized. So we have our incident randomly polarized light. It enters into a filter. That filter blocks all of the, in this case it looks like all of the uh, uh, the electric field waves that are not 
horizontal. Um, and what we end up with is horizontally oriented electric fields. Uh, and that gives us our, um, uh, our polarized light. So the vertically oriented electric field is absorbed in the polarizing filter. That's anything that had any vertical component to it. So here you can write down plain polarized light, light that is polarized in one direction that is perpendicular to the direction of propagation. Then we have polarization by selective absorption. So you can imagine uh, if you had a rope that was moving uh, up and down as, as a wave, um, you could uh, move this wave through a filter, which would essentially just be a hole, um, and the wave would not uh, be negatively affected at all. So um, that is uh, um, that slit uh, would allow this vertical wave, but if our wave is moving in a, a number of different directions, um, it's not going to be uh, uh, it's going to be blocked by that by that polarizer. So if we enter uh, this vertical polarizer into another polarizer that's horizontal, um, that will then uh, immediately, uh, essentially just, just uh, deflate the wave. Because our wave is horizontal only, um, when it goes to the horizontal polarizer, um, we won't have any, any, uh, any rotation anymore. So this represents that um, these waves are transverse and not longitudinal. So light is a, is a transverse wave. It's not a longitudinal wave. Because if we had a longitudinal wave, this would not, uh, um, we wouldn't be able to have selective absorption like this. So next it says, in each of the following, describe the process involved as light travels from the source to the analyzing filter. So we have a, uh, our source, our randomly polarized light, entering a polarizer. So now the light is um, oriented only vertically. We put it through another analyzing filter. And now we have light that is, um, some of it has been absorbed. So we have light that is less bright or intense. Um, and at the uh, at the bottom, that was the, the top one. At the bottom, we have the light that is entering the polarizer um, that is vertically oriented. And then it enters the analyzer, and it blocks the light altogether. So if the polarizer and the analyzer are 90 degrees uh, in difference uh, to each other, then they will block all the light. So what I'm going to do before I read this slide, I'm going to show you a demonstration of this. So let me uh, switch to my camera here. What you see, um, I hope you can see that well, is a ticket uh, with a number here. This is a winning ticket, uh, 654858. I hope there's not too much light. I tried to turn the light off back behind me. So, um, so now I'm going to introduce you to two um, little devices here. These are polarizing filters. So um, this is a linear polarized filter. Um, the direction that it's polarized is uh, up and down here, vertical. Um, this is also vertical. So we're going to use this as our, as our polarizer. And this is our analyzer. And an analyzer is really just a second uh, um, filter. So um, what we have here, if I show you my polarizer, um, I am blocking the light that's, that's um, coming through here. So what you see um, is actually polarized light. And this is vertically a polarized light. Now, the good thing about this is that uh, um, you can still see the ticket fine. You won't even really notice that this light is polarized, except for the idea that it's, a, it's slightly darker than if I had this here. But uh, this is how the sunglasses work, the polarized sunglasses. If I have these polarized sunglasses, I see the image really well. Now, my analyzer I'll put underneath. And with my analyzer in the same orientation, you can see, you can still read the ticket fine. It's 
five, eight. But with my analyzer, I can start to tilt it. And if I tilt it at 45 degrees, I've now cut the intensity of the light by half. So I can still see that ticket, but it's a bit darker. So I'll move it back. Now what happens if I tilt my analyzer at 90 degrees? So if I tilt it 90 degrees, it blacks out the light entirely. So I can't even see the ticket. So I'll tilt my analyzer back, you can see. When I have my polarizing filters in the same orientation, um, the, the, the light it, I can see is, is uh, not blocked at all. But as I start to tilt it, I start blocking the light. When I get to 45 degrees, I've blocked half of the light intensity. Um, this is almost totally blocked. When I put it at 90 degrees, I block it entirely. So that's how polarized light works. When light or any other electromagnetic wave strikes a surface, the electric fields that are perpendicular to that surface are absorbed, and the parallel or horizontal electric fields are reflected. Therefore, the reflected light is polarized parallel to the reflective surface. So please copy this down. Polarization occurs when one of the axes of light oscillation is blocked. This occurs by selective absorption or reflection. Um, it demonstrates that light is a transverse wave, not longitudinal. So now, uh, this gets back to the, uh, how we can see inside of a stream uh, without uh, seeing that reflected light. Uh, light is polarized when it reflects off of a surface as well. So as the light's reflecting off a horizontal surface, we're only, the reflection that we see is only horizontally oriented light. If we have sunglasses that are oriented vertically, they would block out any of that light, which means we wouldn't see any reflection on the surface of a pond. And that's just basically what's described here. So we have our sunglasses. It says, how do polarized lenses exclusively absorb glare from the light that is reflected off of the surface of a stream or the hood of a car? The horizontally polarized light is absorbed by the vertically oriented um, or, or sorry, the uh, vertically oriented uh, sunglasses. Um, and this again, it tells us how, it's, how it removes that glare when we're, we can see a fish in a stream rather than seeing the light. Next it says, just before the sun sets, a driver encounters sunlight reflecting off the side of a, of a building. Will polarized sunglasses stop this glare? So this is something you might notice if you have tall buildings around you. Um, and you're wearing your polarized sunglasses, you'll still see a light reflected off of large buildings. Um, you'll see that light because that's vertically oriented light. It goes through the polarized uh, lens, um, so you won't you you won't have any uh, uh, you won't have any of that light blocked. So what polarization is used for? Um, a number of um, uh, engineering, well, I guess, in structural engineering disciplines. They will often create uh, pyrite materials, um, and these uh, um, you can actually determine weak spots of materials um, by observing uh, um, how light travels through them. So um, uh, you see here two images. You see a cassette tape on the right, um, and you see a, uh, a n number of uh, geometer's tools on the left. So um, based on how um, the different indices of, of refraction are for these glass uh, or plastic uh, materials, um, they allow for colorful displays based on how the, uh, the object is bent um, when it polarized light passes through it. So lucite is a material um, that's used to make models. This is um, done to help uh, determine where mechanical stresses might occur for um, structures that engineers might be designing. So here's some applications of polarizers, sunglasses, lucite models of large structures, the design and production of LCD displays as well. Um, this slide here says when linearly polarized light passes through certain materials, the materials rotate 
the direction of the light's polarization in an effect called optical activity. Materials that are optically active usually contain molecules with a screw-like or helical structure. Liquid crystal displays make use of polarizers to create optical act uh, activity. So a liquid crystal display, um, basically it's a polarizer that rotates around a um, uh, uh, around an axis, um, and it will uh, um, it will transform the light. Oh, it will actually release the the type of light that is desired, um, basically uh, um, acting as your your kind of RGB control, your 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 different color control. So as it rotates, it absorbs diff it leaves out different types of colors. So only the color that's desired is, is output. So here it says, for example, when no voltage is applied, the long screw-shaped molecules in the liquid crystal rotate the plane of polarization by 90 degrees so that the outgoing light can pass through the output polarizer. Uh, however, an applied voltage causes the liquid crystal to stop rotating its plane of polarization. As a result, the light that comes out of the liquid crystal is still polarized at 90 degrees relative to the output polarizer. So no light is transmitted and the display appears dark. So if it rotates totally, it blocks out that and gives you a black, um, it gives you a black, uh, a black light, so a dark light.